welcome to Price This House. Hi, I'm Dave O'Neill from Century 21 Northeast right here in North Reading. And I'm Kimberly oneill Mara, also from Century 21 Northeast here in North Reading. We're here to talk to you about the local market, talking about the first half of 2019 numbers versus those from the first half of 2018 numbers. And the towns we're covering are North Reading, Reading, Linfield, and Andover. So let's get started with just the facts. I think you're going to be impressed with the numbers, everything's showing positive. So in North Reading, for the first half of 2019, there's 85 single family homes versus 76 in 2018. That's a 12% increase. That's excellent. Average list price this year was 614, last year 568. That's an 8% increase. The average sale price for this year is 617 versus last year it was 569. That's a 9% increase. Dollars per square foot, $290 right now, and last year it was 273 so it's a 6% increase. And then days on market, they just basically stayed the same, 29 this year at 30 last year. So as you can see, it's a very, very healthy market in North Reading. For condos, we had 28 sell this year versus 28 last year, same. Average list price this year was 347 versus 247 last year. That's a 40% increase. Average sale price, 347 versus 247. That's a 40% increase. Price per square foot, 295 this year versus 248 last year. That's a 19% increase. And days on market this year, 68 versus 16 last year, 325. I think that really speaks to the market. Things are coming on, giving people a little bit of breathing room, but if they're priced right, they are in fact going right away. And as far as multifamilies go, we didn't have any this year, but last year there were two. The average list price was 542 and the average sale price last year was 505 for a multifamily in North Reading. Land this year, we had three sales in the first half of 2019. and 2018, we had two. And the average list price this year was 239 versus 165 last year. And the average sale price is 231 versus 151 last year. Days on market, 31 this year. And last year, there were 82. So again, very healthy real estate market in North Reading. Now for Reddick. Thank you, Dave. Um, for the first half of 2019, uh, single family sales in Reading, we had 109 versus 88 a year ago. That's a 24% increase, which is pretty significant. Uh, the average list price was 650 this year versus 620 year last year, which is a 3% increase. And the average sale price was 650 versus 634, so a 3% um, increase over last year. Price per square footage rose from 319 a year ago to 334, which is a 5% increase. And the days to offer were 30 days versus 22 a year ago. So kind of a little bit more, you know, even and, um, you know, even to deal with. For condos, we had 32 this year versus 45 last year. So that's a significant decrease. Keep in mind in Reading in years past, we had Reading Woods and we had a lot of condo new builds um, and th that actually has slowed down. So that's why you see the decrease there. The average list price, however, went from 420 a year ago up to 503 this year, which is a 20% increase. And the average sale price went from 420 up to 497. So that's an 18% increase in sales price, which is fantastic. Uh, price per square foot stayed about the same went from 320 to 319. And the days on market went from 23 a year ago to 50 this year. Multifamilies, again, not a ton, similar to North Reading. There are a few more, though. Um, in Reading last year, we had seven, and this year we only had five, so that's a small decrease. Um, the average list price uh, last year was 578. That went up to 699 this year, which is a 21% increase. And the average sale price went from 574 to 663. That's a 15% increase. The price per square foot went from 250 down to 225, which is a 10% decrease. Again, with multifamilies, there's you know not a lot, so the data can be skewed a little bit there. Um, and the days on market was you know somewhat consistent, from going from 31 to 39 days. In land, we only sold one parcel this year. There's just not that much land left in Reading. Uh, there wasn't any sold a year ago. Um, and this year, the one parcel was listed for 289.9 and sold for 260. Uh, it was on the market for 217 days. Wow, again, healthy market. Absolutely. So now we'll move on to Linfield. Uh, the first half of 2019, we had 50 sales versus 65 last year. That's a decrease of 23%. Again, Linfield had an awful lot of new build last year. Mm -hmm. uh, the average list price last year was 750, 
versus 742 this year. The average sale price this year is 739 versus 757 last year. Price per square foot in Linfield this year is 282 versus 266 dollars. Days to offer in Linfield for the first half of the year is 35 versus last year 52. So again, a robust market, less inventory, but a robust market. Condos in Linfield, there were 10 this year versus 11 last year. Average list price 564 versus 496 last year, a 14% increase. Average sales price for condos in Linfield, 561 versus 477, that's an 18% increase. Price per square foot, pretty much the same, 289 versus 285. And days on market, um, 76 for the first half of this year versus 103 last year. Multifamilies in Linfield, same thing as Reading and North Reading, no inventory, nothing. So as far as land, there was nothing sold this year and nothing sold last year. So if there is a landowner that has some land or a property that they're thinking of selling, now is a great time to take advantage of the market because if you don't have any competition, if there's somebody looking for land, they're going to pay top dollar viewers. Thank you, Dave. And now for Andover, um, <clears throat> for single-family homes in 2019, we had 162 this year versus 154 a year ago. That's a 5% increase. The average list price went from 802 to 693. That's a 14% decrease. Um, you know, that's just kind of the market stabilizing a little bit there, I think. The sale price actually was 793 last year versus 685 this year, which is also a little bit of a decrease. Um, <clears throat> price per square foot was 262 a year ago and 266 this year. Days on market were, excuse me, days till offer were 37 last year versus 35 this year. Days on market versus date to offer, just a slight, slight difference. Days to offer is when the offer is actually accepted versus days on market is when the purchase and sale agreement is signed. So there's maybe a couple of day difference with those numbers. Um, for condos in Andover, um, in 2018, there were 78. There are only 58 this year. Uh, that's a 26% decrease. Uh, the average list price went from 373, though, all the way up to 468. So that's a 25% increase. And the sale price, uh, similarly, was 376 a year ago, and it was 463 this year, which is a 23% increase. Uh, the price per square foot stayed consistent at 281 for both years, and the days on market were 45 last year versus 54 this year. Uh, for multifamilies, only three last year versus two this year, so you know, pretty flat. Uh, the price uh, average list price last year was 485 versus this year was 515, and the average sale price last year was 483 versus 510 this year. Uh, the days on market um, were, went from 30 down to 14, and the price per square foot was 163 last year versus 206 this year, so a big jump up for those multifamilies. Um, again, similar to all the other communities we cover, there were no land sales in the first half of this year or last year. There's just not that much land left in um, all of these towns that we're covering. So that's, uh, that's it for just the facts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to spotlight a home in each of the four communities that we've been mm -hmm. talking about. We're going to talk to you about um, a home in each of those towns is that about the million dollar range. Um, and for North Reading, the home we're going to be featuring is 10 Memory Lane. Um, this house actually never even hit the market. Uh, it was priced to go on at 949 and we have such a backlog of buyers that we were actually able to kind of play the match game behind the scenes and sell it at over asking price. It's actually going to sell for closer to a million dollars. Um, it hasn't closed yet, but it will be closing in the next couple of weeks. And that was just from us, you know, um, having the backlog of buyers to sell something before we even hit the market. It saved the sellers from, you know, the expense of, you know, getting it 100% completely ready. It didn't have to be ready for open houses. We didn't do any open houses. We did a couple of private showings and sold it ourselves before having to deal with all of the, you know, all of the special requests that people get bogged down with. Um, so that was, um, you know, that was great. It was a beautiful, beautiful house, 12 rooms, five bedrooms, three full baths, including a master, two fireplaces, 180 degree panoramic view of the golf course. Um, so it was really a spectacular house, over 4,000 square feet on over an acre of land, um, really was furnished beautifully and um, a very nice uh, family selling the home and a very nice family buying the home. So um, it's a win-win for everybody involved. It was a beautiful location. Right absolutely, absolutely. And so for Reading, we're going to talk about 83 County Road. It was an absolutely beautiful expanded cape. It was listed at 949.9 and sold 
for $949.99. 11 rooms, four bedrooms, three and a half baths, two fireplaces, just pristine condition inside and out. It was new in 2013, so for six years, uh, had basically very little wear and tear on it. All of the construction was top end, down to the hardware used and all of that, so it really made it that home that jumps out at you. They had extra spaces here and there. They had a walk-in pantry in the kitchen that was just to die for. It was just absolutely gorgeous. There was a secret clubhouse off of one of the bedrooms and time for summer resort style yard. Absolutely pristine. Again, County Road in Reading is a great location near the two highways and it was listed and sold for $949.9. Great, great property. You want to continue with Linfield? Now we're going to do Linfield? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we'll move to Linfield and 5 Pizzuti Way. It was on the market at 985 and sold for 925. Eight rooms, four bedrooms, four full baths and two half baths and one fireplace. It was on a cul-de-sac, four bedrooms with ensuite baths, two additional half bathrooms, hardwood floors throughout, just absolutely pristine. They had extra spaces in the lower level that's not even included in the square footage, so it's 4,300 plus the basement, so you're up about 5,000 square feet for nine and a quarter, which I know it's a lot of money, but in Linfield, that's really not a bad price. Um, pristine condition, did I say that? Inside and out, top, top location, and uh, went for a very good price of 925. So it shows you sometimes something comes on and it sits around a week or two, maybe you come in a little lower and you can probably get it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the, it's been kind of frustrating for a lot of buyers out there because they've been, you know, such you know, limited inventory that the buyers are getting outbid over and over and over again. But every now and again, you, you kind of can luck out, and depending on the timing, if a house sits, you know, a week or two, then they might have an opportunity to step in. Um, to finish out the spotlight, we'll look at Andover. We're going to look at 7 Woodmore Terrace. Um, it was an 8-room, 4-bedroom, 3-and-a-half bath. Um, it was a stunning, stunning, stunning colonial at the beginning of a cul-de-sac in the prestigious Sterling Woods Estate subdivision. Um, you entered into a grand foyer overseen by the second floor double-sided balcony, um, which was just beautifully, had a beautiful gleaming chandelier, glass French door entrance into the study, separate exit onto the different farmer's porches, cathedral ceilings, nine-foot ceilings with a crown molding. Um, two of the bedrooms had private vanity rooms um, with shared bathrooms, and the third bedroom actually had a full um, standing uh, bathroom as well. Um, the master bedroom also had a den and cathedral ceiling with a full bath and walk-in closet and a dressing room. Uh, there was a three-car garage um, and a huge um, unfinished basement, so the potential to you know add additional um, add additional square footage. Um, this this neighborhood does not turn over very often so this is really you know a very very beautiful home 3,700 um, square feet on just about an acre of land that was listed for $9.99 and again it sat for a little bit and ended up being able to be purchased for $9.50 so you know there are opportunities uh, once mm -hmm. you get to that price point to you know maybe have the price come down to become a little bit more affordable. That could be a good role for your buyer's agent. Your buyer's agent is supposed to do some investigating of what comparable sales would be for a house. So if you go in with an offer and you've got three or four houses similar, similar location, similar quality, similar size, and it's at a different price, you can sometimes get your offer accepted if you have the data. So that just goes to show you that if you have a good buyer's agent and they know what they're doing, you're going to pay fair market value, not necessarily above market value. Absolutely, absolutely. That completes the um, spotlight portion of the show. Um, Dave, you want to talk about our guest that's going to be joining us after the break? Sure. Laura Miranda, she's newly working for the police department. We're excited to hear what she has to offer. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, we're back. We're joined now with Laura Miranda, who's the town's new mental health and substance abuse clinician. Welcome. Thank you. So this is a new position that has just come to the town. Correct. And you want to just kind of fill us in a little bit about what your job is and what you do? Sure. So I work out of the police station in town. It's a new position as of October 2018. Mm -hmm. The way it shakes out is a, a couple of different ways. So the biggest is the police officers will stabilize a situation, whether it be a mental health or substance abuse call. Mm -hmm. And then with the person's permission, they give me the person's information to do outreach afterwards to see if the person wants further services, whether it be for mental health or substance mm -hmm. abuse. 
Other ways in which it plays out is I'm organizing community presentations, mm -hmm. doing speeches and trainings to the public, and working in collaboration with the schools and the community impact team. Mm, sounds like you're pretty busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. yeah. What's your background and how did you like come to this position? Sure, so I myself am a licensed mental health counselor through the state of Massachusetts. I went to um, UMass Amherst for my undergraduate in psychology and Lesley University for my graduate degree in clinical counseling. I did a few years of work in a community-based flexible support agency, it's a mouthful, um, over in Wakefield. Got a lot of experience with a lot of diverse populations. In that role, I was there for about three years and I saw this opportunity and jumped on it. Mm -hmm. So how did it bring the town to um off of the, the um, or see the need. Sure. Do you have any history on what led the town to making that decision? So my understanding is the town was proactive in creating mm -hmm. this role in response to calls for service for mental health or substance abuse issues that they were seeing in the community mm -hmm. and took that proactive stance to address it and try to get people into treatment or services to help them. You know, mm -hmm. in, instead of punishing or, or viewing these, these issues as crimes or negative behavior? How can we help people and get them the services that they need and the treatment that they deserve? And what have you seen as the response from those people? Yeah, it's been well received. It yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. So they welcome it, yeah. or sometimes maybe not 100%, but they come around eventually? You know, it's situational. Mm -hmm. It depends, just like everything else. But overall, I've been so well received by everybody that I've been in contact with. It's been a really great experience so That's far. Great. That's yeah. great. Do you work out of the police station? Yes. Okay. I am housed right across the street at the okay. police station. Okay. And how much involvement with the schools? As much as I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been a wonderful community partner for me. Mm -hmm. It's been great. That's terrific. Yeah. 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 And are you doing like per, like what kind of what type of work do you do in the schools? Is it just like like information like that your distribution, or are you doing like preventative programming, or what what kinds of programs are you doing? Sure. So with the community impact team, I'm doing some collaboration work for prevention, mm -hmm. but I do community based training. So whether it be involving youth or inviting youth to the trainings that are held here, mm -hmm. putting it out through the school. The school's been so helpful in getting the message out. If there's a training in town sending it out on their blast email lists, and I've been trying to attend all of the trainings that the school are putting, the schools are putting on as well. That's great. Yeah. What a resource, huh? Yeah. Now, great. is this something that's pretty common in the 351 cities and towns in the town, in the state? Yes, it's becoming more and more common. It's a great mm -hmm. thing to have, in my opinion. I think it's a wonderful addition to a community mm -hmm. in terms of treatment-based interventions. Mm -hmm. So more and more police departments across the mm -hmm. state are, are adding this onto their team. Where people are talking about there being problems nowadays where years before they didn't. Exactly. So then they see the need and then they bring someone like you in. Exactly. Oh, that's terrific. And you know, it, it begs the question, it's a lot of the chicken or the egg, was mm -hmm. the problem here or it's getting worse or mm -hmm. was it here and it just wasn't addressed. So mm -hmm. in any way that I can help bring treatment and services to the community, that's why I'm here. Is there a way to measure year over year or something like that? We're working on it. So what I'm doing right now is keeping track of the number of interactions that I have with people. Mm -hmm. okay. And are your interactions, are they, does it um, start with there being an incident and then you're kind of like the follow-up? Or can people contact you directly if they have a Absolutely. question or a need? Or t can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, any and all of the above. So okay. like I mentioned in the beginning, it, a lot of the work is done initiated by officers. So with the person's permission, the individual's permission, or the families, they will give me the person's, in the person's information and I will reach out as a follow-up to an incident. Okay. On the flip side of that, people can call me, walk into the police station when I'm working and we can meet right then and there. Okay. So it can be initiated by an individual or a loved one, a family member can reach out to me on behalf of somebody. Mm -hmm. And, and I do you get a lot of that or yeah. is it more, oh you do? Yeah. Really? Great. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It is. is there limitations as to what you can talk about with the people? Or if they're bringing something to you, then you're free to talk about it? It depends on the person's uh -huh. age. So if somebody comes to me for a minor, uh -huh. then I can share the information with the parent or guardian. Okay. But if they come to me for somebody who's over 18, the information's limited to the individual who okay. is in question. Right. So you have that, like, doctor-patient confidentiality? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's great. Okay. So... In the um, training, I'm sure that it's constantly 
upgrading mm -hmm. or, or constantly being introduced new things. What organizations do you maybe participate in where you would get continuing education? From? Sure. So I really enjoy the trainings that NAMI puts on, as well as any and all trainings that are sent to me within the police department on the kind of intersect between police and mental health. Mm -hmm. Those have been great. I just went to CIT training, which is crisis intervention training with a bunch of police officers, mm. Amy Lakowitz and I got the opportunity to go to that. It was wonderful. It was a 40-hour training on for police officers. So we got to sit in on that and see the information that is being presented to officers so we can try to assist in the same mindset. So you would say the town's really embracing it? Absolutely. That's great to Yes, hear. it's That's been so wonderful, really. Yeah. And to have a police chief who is focused on helping people in this way is so wonderful and really progressive. That's great to hear. Yeah, That's it's great. great. Yeah, yeah. Well, North Reading's had its issues over the years, so yeah. I'm glad to see somebody in this position that's, um, you know, up and running and, and really doing... Yeah, and you know, North Reading is not alone in having the issue, mm -hmm. so it really speaks to the progressive mindset to bring somebody on board to try to help out before things get too bad. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. It's yeah. great to know. I mean, so the majority of our viewers are, you know, people interested in the real estate market, mm -hmm. and it's nice to know when people are thinking of, you know, buying into this community and doing their research to know, you know, how the town does think about these types Absolutely. of services and how valuable it is. And, and th that's just one example of, you know, some of the nice things and, and progressive things that the town is doing for the community. Absolutely. I don't live in North Reading myself, and I can't say enough good things about the community and the fact that they brought on this position to help out its community members. It's so great. We'll That's get you wonderful. over here, Dave. We'll give you a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I appreciate and, you both. Um, I've met you a few times now yes. through Rotary and so forth. So we appreciate the fact that you're here. Sure. We look forward to hopefully not having to deal with you too much, but, <laughs> um, you know, things in town and so forth. So, again, thank you very much for your time being here today. Absolutely. Before I jet, I want to just let people know how you can reach oh, me. Absolutely. So right across the street at the police station, I work out of the police station you can walk right in otherwise I can be called at 978-357-5038 or emailed at lmiranda at nrpd.org. And That's you work so town hall hours correct? correct. Uh, yes Monday through Thursday 8 to 4 Fridays 8 to 1. Terrific. Thank and you if you so didn't write all you. that down get in touch yeah. with us we have her number. <laughs> awesome yeah. thank you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Joy, isn't that interesting, huh? That was fantastic. Who knew that we had that kind of resource in the town? It's unbelievable. Really? It's good to see. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really good to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so to, to round out our show, we're going to move to Beantown and Beyond, and today we're going to highlight um, a rental listing in South Boston. So um, we've done quite a bit of work in South Boston over the years, and right now we have a beautiful single-family home, um, which are very rare in South Boston, um, 84 Old Harbor Street. We have it on the market for rent for 6000 a month. It's three bedrooms, two and a half baths on three levels. Um, it, it is just an executive type of home very close to the beach has garage parking which is very rare in South Boston as well central air uh, open concept gourmet kitchen private backyard I mean we're talking of the middle of the city to have something like this is just really you know phenomenal this home is furnished um, and available for rent immediately so if you know anybody that's looking for a pied-à-terre uh, in the city um, or an executive looking for, you know, just some place, some roots in Boston, it's convenient to um, the seaport, it's convenient to Copley, and it's just a few steps from the beach. So that's on the market right now for 6000 a month. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Great. The city prices are yeah. continuing to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's demand is there. It's all Absolutely. about supply and demand. So we're going to move on to the portion where we talk about something to think about. And this is a home that's actually ready to go on the market, but the family has been taking some time to remove the mother's personal uh, items. The mother went to live with the daughter, and so the rest of the family is trying to go through. So it's coming on the market any day now. It is at 2 Hickory Lane in North Reading. Very nice, very well built uh, split entry in the Chestnut Village neighborhood. It has two fireplaces, one upstairs in the living room, one downstairs in the family room. 
and it has hall hardwood upstairs, which is the way they used to build the houses. Nowadays, they don't. So you're going to maybe rip up some rugs, do some paint and cleaning it up. The kitchen has been updated. It has been freshly painted, all white kitchen, which shows very, very nice. And it's coming on the market at five and a quarter. So if you want to take a look at it, give us a call and we can have you be one of the first ones in. That's a great neighborhood too. They have summer block parties. They have a big like Halloween extravaganza. It's really, really a, a great, yeah. uh, a great neighborhood in town, yeah. and that's a fantastic price. So yeah. I'm sure that'll move quickly. Yeah, it's one of the older, established neighborhoods. Absolutely. People always kill to get in there. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, so if you have any questions or you want to talk about any certain topics on our show, you can feel free to reach out to Dave or me at Price dot this house at century21.com and we thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next quarter take care